Hello everyone, welcome to the video on anti-tubercular drugs. This is a picture of the drugs which are very widely used to treat tuberculosis. The major course of treatment in TB is isoniazid, pyrazinamide, ethambutal and rifampicin. You can see all of them are orally taken drugs. Let us explore about all these drugs. This is my channel. If you like the video contents, do subscribe. Now, these are all the drugs according to the classical uh, classification. First line oral TB drugs are isoniazid, rifampicin, ethambutal, pyrazinamide. They are known with a certain code. Isoniazid is isonicotinic acid hydrazine. So it is known, known with an alphabet known as H. Rifampicin is known as R. Pyrazinamide is known as Z. Ethambutal is known as E. All of them will be having such kind of codes in their boxes. Now, second class is fluoroquinolones like ofloxacin, levofloxacin, moxifloxacin. Now, injectable TB drugs are, most of them are aminoglycosides like streptomycin, canamycin, amicacin, capriomycin. Now, second line drugs are used when the organism acquires resistant to first line drugs like ethionamide, cycloserine, paramino, salicylic acid. There are bunch of other drugs are there with less proven efficacy, but the most important are these classes. Let us see about the drugs. Now see, uh, we'll see the most important drugs first. See, isoniazid is also known as INH. It is coded as H. Now the mechanism action is it inhibits mycolic acid synthesis. In the previous video, I have explained the the bacillus organism and the cell wall is mostly made up of mycolic acid. It is a waxy layer. In fact, uh, the tuberculosis organism uniqueness is this waxy layer and that mycolic acid cell wall is inhibited by isoniazid. In fact, isoniazid is a prodrug. It requires an enzyme which is synthesized by bacteria that is known as catalase. So this prodrug is activated by this catalase and the active drug will inhibit mycolic acid. Now the problem is resistance. When people start using this drug repeatedly, the enzyme which is required to convert into active form, the gene is mutated and the enzyme will not be released. So the drug remain as such, it will not be activated. So this is the problem. Now side effects, hepatitis relatively, le uh, uh, see most of the anti-TB drugs has got this problem because the treatment goes for six to eight months all of them will have impact on the liver and they cause hepatitis. And isoniazid may also cause peripheral neuritis. To treat that, vitamin B6 is given along with that. Now, it may cause sideroblastic anemia. To treat that, vitamin B6 is given. And systemic lupus erythematis in slow acetylators is a problem. Isoniazid is, is metabolized by acetylation. In rapid acetylators, the drug dose has to be increased. In slow acetylators, this effect is the problem. So this is about isoniazid. The next one is rifampin. Rifampin is also known as rifampicin. Both of them are the same. They inhibit DNA dependent RNA polymerase of tuberculosis organism. It will not affect human enzyme. Again, the side effects are hepatitis and they induce cytochrome P450 enzyme. One of the other problem is it will give red to orange metabolites. So all the secretions ranging from eye drops to urine and sweat, all of them may appear orange in color and the patient need to be aware of this fact otherwise they they may scare that the blood is coming out now the next drug is ethambutal it inhibits a cell wall component known as arabinogalactan so isoniazid and ethambutal both of them are inhibiting cell wall but isoniazid directly inhibits mycolic acid ethambutal inhibits arabinogalactan component it causes dose dependent visual di visual disturbances the problem is when people take these drugs, they lose the ability to differentiate between green and red. This is the major problem. If this discrimination is not there, the traffic signals will get, they'll get confused during traffic signals. The next drug is pyrazinamide. Pyrazinamide inhibits cell membrane of tuberculosis organism. We'll see it again, but understand this one. The common side effects are hepatitis and hyperuricemia. Now, the next important one is streptomycin. We have seen this already in aminoglycosides. This inhibits protein synthesis. This is a bacteriocidal agent. Now, we have seen in the previous lecture also, it causes nephrotoxicity, neurotoxicity, and ototoxicity. 
the major thing is streptomycin has got very low occurrence of hepatitis rest of all drugs the major side effect is hepatitis but streptomycin has got low incidence of hepatitis let us understand them better now understand this one so this is what is a mycobacterium is now the cell it has got a cell wall which is made up of mycolic acid cell membrane is there now this mycolic acid and cell wall components are inhibited by isoniazid and ethionamide ethambutal all of them will affect cell wall isoniazid will affect mycolic acid ethambutal will affect another component of cell wall whereas pyrazinamide inhibits cell membrane synthesis cell membrane synthesis is inhibited by pyrazinamide now fluoroquinolones as we have seen all of them will inhibit dna supercoiling rifampicin or rifamycin inhibit the enzyme rna polymerase streptomycin a protein synthesis inhibitor macrolides are also used they are also protein synthesis inhibitors now you have another drugs called as delaminate and proteominate we'll see them later they are known as bicyclic nitroimidazole they inhibit mycolic acid and protein synthesis they also generate reactive nitrogen species these drugs are used to treat multi drug resistant tuberculosis bedaquilin also used to treat multi drug resistant tuberculosis and it inhibits atp synthesis the last one is oxazolidine known as linezolid linezolid is again linezolid is again a protein synthesis inhibitor these drugs are used to treat multi drug resistant tb you need to understand what do you mean by multi drug resistant tb if the organism became resistant to isoniazid and rifampicin then it is considered as multi drug resistant tb and it it is it can be treated by bedaquilin linezolid and delaminate and proteominate moving further now see the major problem with mycobacterium tuberculosis is it develop resistance there are multiple ways are there by which it acquires resistance we'll see one by one see uh, it the environment it makes acidic environment or the ph is reduced in this low ph streptomycin will become inactivated this is one form of resistance second one the drug is exported from the cell before it reaches the target which is also known as efflux pump a flex pump is the major mechanism by which streptomycin isoniazid ethambutal send outside of the cell this is the second method next there are mutations in dna and that include that enhances resistance that mutations will enable the organism to to survive these drugs next one there is an alteration in target protein structure like rifampicin go and bind with an enzyme ethambutal streptomycin all of them will go and bind with cell components and if that protein structure is altered the drugs cannot go and bind this is another way of resistance alteration in enzyme c the isoniazid is a pro drug and pyrazinamide is also pro drug both of them needs an enzyme conversion and there occur certain alterations by which the drugs will become will stay in pro drug form next one anaerobic condition lead to dormant and non replicating state and the last one drug is unable to penetrate the cell so drug cannot get inside the cell so the organism has developed six various ways of resistance now this is also an important one see drugs that block metabolic process have no effect during state of dormancy the problem with tb organism is it is mostly non replicating it will not divide uh, regularly it is a very slowly replicate if it is a slow replicator rifampicin fluoroquinolone all these drugs cannot act on them so this is the major problem because it is it is very slowly replicates slow replicate so because of this most of these drugs cannot get act on this organism moving further now to treat the uh, uh, tuberculosis who has proposed a program known as dots dots means directly observed treatment short course it has got five elements one political commitment with increased and sustained financing that means if a person gets tb the testing and the drugs should be given freely by the government that is what is political commitment and financing so testing is free drugs will be given for free of cost case detection through quality assured bacteriology this is what included in test immediately they they should be tested in a quality assured centers standardized treatments according to dots all of them will be using a standardized treatment which is followed by all these hospitals effective drug supply see the treatment goes from 6 to 8 months from all this period the drugs shortage should not be there 
and monitoring and evaluation system and impact measurement see this uh, this monitoring means uh, that is what uh, the name stands for dots directly absorbed means the healthcare workers will directly supply these drugs and the treatment goes for short course it is only for 6 to 8 months previously it used to go for years together now it has reduced hence it is known as short course and healthcare workers will directly supply these drugs hence it is known as directly absorbed so these are all the five elements of dots now india used to follow this revised national tuberculosis control program known as rntcp from 2020 onwards it is renamed as national tuberculosis elimination program the names are changed but they follow this course now understand this if someone has got latent tb infection that means tb is not in active form then daily isoniazid has to be given for 9 months this is what is prescribed by world health organization now category 1 now category 1 when someone gets first time tb it is considered as category 1 in such cases 2 months isoniazid rifampicin pyrazinamide ethambutal are given and then 4 months isoniazid and rifampicin are given this is for category 1 when first time someone gets gets the uh, tb the treatment goes for 6 months 2 months this 4 drugs 4 months this 2 drugs now category 2 is relapse or someone get the TB for the second time or the latent form is activated. In such cases the treatment goes for 8 months. First 2 months isoniazid, rifampin, pyrazinamide, ethambutal and streptomycin is also given. Next 1 month isoniazid, rifampin, pyrazinamide, ethambutal are given. For the next 5 months isoniazid, rifampin and ethambutal are given. This one goes for 8 months. So this is what is given by World Health Organization and this is what India follows by name RNTCP and NTEP. Now after this, okay, uh, after this TB, the related organs are Mycobacterium leprae causes leprosy. It is treated by clofazimine, dapsone and rifampin. Clofazimine in fact an anti-inflammatory drug. The major problem with leprosy is the inflammation will eat away the tissue and causes tissue damage. That inflammation is controlled by clofazimine. But the problem with clofazimine is it gives black coloration to urine. Rifampin will give orange coloration whereas clofazimine gives black urine coloration. Dapsone is a sulfur drug. It is an anti-metabolite. It inhibits the folic acid synthesis in organism. Rifampin we have already seen it inhibits RN, DNA dependent RNA polymerase enzyme and because of that new DNA formation will not be there. So these are all the drugs to treat leprosy. Thank you for watching this video.